everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on page seven, Catch of the Day. And we're starting with an eight by eight pocket page. And I think I've got everything trimmed and I'm ready to go. And I keep referencing page two because I want it to be a mirror image. So for page seven, we're going to install eek, a five by eight panel. <laughs> you can hear me hesitating. A uh, five by eight panel on the right hand side. So it's a uh, five by eight. You're going to score half inch on the five inch side. <clears throat> And this is the second time I built this because the first time I built it, I built it on top of a eight by eight and a half inch page. So none of my measurements worked. <laughs> so I had to start over. So I'm recording this a second time. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that is on the right hand side. And again, the pockets are open to the left and right. And then um, we're going to install, I think, a four and a half by eight inch panel flush on the um, left hand side. That was Nala. I don't know what she's barking at. Probably Sam coming down the stairs. Sam's my son. <clears throat> my one and only. Okay, there we go. So we've got our five inch over here and our four and a half over here. And of course on the four and a half inch, you're gonna score half inch on the four and a half inch side. So there we go, like so. And this is good, yeah, okay. Now we have another flap that gets installed on top of the five inch flap. So it's gonna be this sort of extender. <clears throat> Come back and look and we are going to install it one inch from the edge and this is on the five inch side the five inch panel we're going to come over with this score line and install it one inch off this edge let me get some contrast paper in here because it's hard to see so again this is the five by eight inch side and this panel is four and a half by eight we're going to move it over to the one inch mark and install it. So I'm just gonna put a little tick mark real quick on the top and bottom. <clears throat> and then this is gonna leave a little lip. Um, and you'll see why as we move forward. Of course, you've already done it on page two. We're using it um, to, to hold down, hold the flap closed. Okay, there we go. Now, let's get this installed <clears throat> and I'm going to turn it this way I think there we go Looks like it's a little long, so I might put that in my trimmer and trim that off real quick. Um, so that is, so you can see I need that one inch. It's gonna go like this. So the last piece is we're going to install a photo mat, and that photo mat is four and three eighths by eight. And it's gonna get installed just like this on this lip, but we're not gonna do that until we decorate this edge. Four and three eighths by eight, I'm, I said eight, four and three eighths by seven, four and three eighths by seven. I'm trying to find my eraser, here it is. I got, I wrote it down wrong, four and three eighths by seven. So it's not gonna be, um, it's gonna have a half inch on either side and it'll be centered just like so. When you open this and then open the extended flap, it'll come with it. And then when you close it, you close this over, it holds all this in place. And then all you need is one magnet here. So let's go ahead and put that magnet in. <clears throat> we can do that now because this really won't matter. Okay. 
Do I have that right? I do not have that right. It's going like this. I had it backwards. So the left hand flap, put it in the closed position and the, the extended flap goes over. So we're gonna place the magnet here. <clears throat> Both of these flaps are the same, but you want the, the uh, you want something to hold this in place and that's what this flap is doing. So make sure you, you close it and put your magnets on the right sides. <clears throat> So there's our magnet holding it closed. This flap is keeping this in place until we're ready for it to move. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna trim this up so it's not hanging over, but I don't I won't do that on camera because my trimmer's too hard to move around. And that is it for page seven. And the next time we oh no, it's not. There's one more element and it's a pocket. And you're gonna start with a four and a half by four and a half inch square. You're gonna score three of the four sides, miter the corners and make a pocket and it's gonna get installed right here. I was just making sure it's gonna fit. It looks good. <clears throat> And I'm gonna put an insert in the pocket, but I haven't I haven't designed that yet. But when we get to it, I will definitely tell you the size of the insert and it'll be in the cut list as well. I just don't know what I don't know what it's gonna be yet. I don't know how tall I want it. It's pretty obvious you only have so much to work with on width, but I just don't know how where I want it to land. So that is it for each. Seven. And of course, our photo mat will get installed like so. Okay. All right. Next time we sit down together, we will start decorating. Hey guys, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, we're working on, I have to refresh my memory, page seven. Page seven. And I, I'm liking the way this turned out. So it's going to be uh, very similar to page two. Of course, I'm using different paper. Um, but I think it's going to look good. Okay, <clears throat> so enough of that. Enough celebrating. We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> oh, I can't remember if I showed you this uh, when I constructed um, the paper, the uh, flaps in the pockets, but there is a magnet that's holding these two flaps together. And even if I did show it to you, you may need to adjust them because I am color blocking. And so I had to shift these down. So once I decided I was going to do this 7 8 inch strip or 1 inch, whatever you have, um, I decided that it was too close to where the other paper was going to lay. And I wanted to make sure that I could get the paper completely adhered to the cardstock and not leave sort of a bubble. So unfortunately, these magnets are... Um, they have these sort of rigid edges instead of a bevel. So getting the paper to lay down over the edge when it's really close is a little bit difficult. So I just went ahead and shifted the magnets. You may need to also. Okay, enough of that. Let's get some paper down. Let me use a contrast sheet with my notes on it, <laughs> which you don't care about. It's from something else. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, you know what? It, it it's driving me nuts. But the uh, the bottom of this glue is not flat, so it keeps wanting to tip over. I have to really be conscious about it. I don't think I've had that problem with art glitter before. Okay, there we go. Ooh, so pretty. Okay, now you may remember on page six, um, we're using the same pattern. So as you can see, there it is. So it's the same pattern. Um, 
And in fact, it's like this is the stamp is cut off here and here's the second half of the stamp. So it's a continual pattern across the two, although this is not eight inches. <clears throat> and so that's where we get sort of the cohesion um, of patterns across. Remember, these two are going to open away from each other and be what I consider a complete layout. <clears throat> page one and page eight are the only two that don't have an opposing page. Um, it could if you if you wanted to, but I usually design my covers very simply. <clears throat> I have to get some contrast there. I couldn't see my edge. Okay. And then this is actually the flip side of the same pattern. And oops, you know what I did? I did it backwards. This one was supposed to go up here. So this one's not going to be big enough. I'm going to have to trim out another paper. How about that? No, nope, they're both exactly the same. So when, <laughs> when I picked it up and I was prepping for this, I laid one down. I'm like, oh, it's too big, but it should have been the flip side up here. So I'll come back to that in just a moment. In the meantime, let's go ahead and, and lay down these strips. They happen to be 7 eighths by 7 and 7 eighths. Could be one inch by seven and seven eighths, whatever you like. Um, that's just what I had a scrap of, so I just made the second piece match it. It's a great way to use up your strips. And they don't even have to be the same size. I think just pulling the pattern back in is all that matters. So if you had, you know, one inch over here and a one and a half inch over here, it still would look great. It's just repeating the pattern. I don't know, I just had a, okay, I just had a slight panic to make sure I was putting everything in right side up, and I was. Okay, now uh, to build that continuity, I'm going to put this one on this side, okay? And again, I did have to adjust my magnets, you may have to as well. And you don't even have to do color blocking, you can just do solid papers here if you want. Okay. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay, now let's get back to this. I'm just gonna need a second to get a piece of paper to trim out. So I need, I need the fish pattern. So I'm marking it right here, and that's just from the edge of the pocket to the top, but I'm actually going to cut a little bit on the other side because I want there to be enough of this to go into the pocket. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm going to do the width based on the width of the red pattern paper. So there. There we go. I just told you I was going to do it a certain way and I, I didn't, so. make sure it fits into the pocket yes it does we're going to ink it and glue it down and then our a sides are done and i'm working on getting the b sides organized so i'll take a quick break after this and we'll get back to the inside shortly
jumped right over. Okay, so the other thing I was um, sort of messing around with on my last break is, you know, what I want to do with this pocket. So we're definitely going to put a tag in this pocket. It won't be a graphic tag because it's too narrow, so we're going to make our own insert. Um, but I also think it, it would be nice if it looked pretty even with the insert out of it. So I trimmed out these pieces. So these are the stamps, and they're easy to come by. Oh, by the way, this is from... 12 by 12, 12 by 12. And of course, this is just the flip side of that. So this is a cut apart, and I think I got this. They're so small. I'm pretty sure this came from the eight by eight. I hate it when I put the cardstock on the back and then I can't keep track of it. This was a, there was four of the, these cut aparts, these three, and then this fourth one which was like this, and then I split it in half. So the postcard's over here and I have this. So I split it, mounted it, and then uh, trimmed out and cardstock backed um, some stamps. I'm gonna put this on page two. This is gonna go on page three. And I haven't decided if I'm actually gonna put it here on the backing or on the tag that goes into the pocket. I'll make that decision a little bit later once I've decided what color the insert's gonna be. I'm pull, I was thinking of using a contrast, so it might be a solid red that goes into the pocket. I'm not sure. And if it is, then it'll definitely need some embellishments. It'll be a little too simple without something on top of it. So that's it for now. Um, I'll be back shortly once I do a little housekeeping and organize the B sides for page seven. Okay, be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne. Let's finish up on page seven. We're going to start working on the B side or the inside of uh, page seven. So the last time we were together, we did the A sides. We also added these two decorative strips, but now we're ready to start decorating the uh, inside. So let's start with these three big pieces, which are pretty easy to place. And get some ink on this. And then we'll do the um, top sides. And I, I may have to do some trimming since there's color blocking involved. I did test it, but you never know. When you're color blocking, it's always good to check, 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 and recheck. Let's actually get the centerpiece down first. Double check. I just want to make sure I had it right side up. And to do. Okay. And then we have these two panels left and right. They match. They are from the patterns and solids. This is from the 12 by 12 patterns and solids. You know what? I need to trim it. I sure thought I'd check that. Maybe it was this one I checked. Yep, it is. So that needs um, like a sixteenth of an inch taken off. Otherwise, it's going to get stuck in the hinge. 
uh, area of the flap. And that will cause the designer paper to buckle right off the edge there. So sorry about that. I'll get it trimmed and we'll lay it down. But first I gotta let it dry. And I actually have to let the um, this dry well as well so, so that I can close the pages and decorate the other side. So let's see if I can't get this in the trimmer and get it trimmed. <clears throat> yes, I see, I was way off. I think, I think it was a rough cut and I never tested it. So it was almost like an eighth of an inch came off. And that's going to do it. Now we'll start decorating uh, the inside. So I've trimmed out these two pieces of paper. They're from the Patterns and Solids. And they need to be trimmed. So yeah, I think I rough cut it and I wanna mark it while it's on the mat that it's going on. Not much. So this whole panel is four inches wide, so you could get a three and a half, two three and a half by three and a halfs on it, um, or you can use these panels to do some journaling because um, they will be on the the reverse side. You won't they won't be exposed when you first come to the page. My goodness, it either gushes out or not at all. And I cleaned my tip. It's, it's getting old. <laughs> I might I might actually have to buy a new tip. And if I do, um, I can tell you that it will be, I probably have almost three years on this tip. So they do last a long time if you take care of them. Um, but something's going on with this because I'm really, I don't think it's me and pressure on the bottle. I think it's something else. I think I could have ad ad adapted by now, but I'm still having trouble um, putting too much glue on the panels. This needs to come down a little bit. Didn't get enough off. Okay, that's right. That is right. It's hard to see, but I was, the edge wasn't quite right. Um, that's why I had to adjust it twice. Okay. So then I want to continue this fish pattern. So this is going right here. Well, it looks like it's trimmed and ready to go for a change.
It's directional, so pay attention to make sure your fish are swimming in the right direction and not upside down. And this is the last piece. It goes here. Oops, this way. And I think we need to take off almost an eighth of an inch. Let's try this, see what happens. There we go. That's good. Almost done. There's one more element on this page and it's a photo mat that's gonna get installed. Um, and it's gonna be the sort of extended flap photo mat. It's hard to describe. so I can see it side to side. Better, better, better. The glue is dry already. That's what it's going to look like closed. This flap closed and there's the front. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a photo mat right here. And I've chosen this pattern and it is from the 6x6. I'm going to go ahead and install it on the mat before I put the mat on this extension here. Actually, we need to put something on the flip side too, so we'll do both. Okay, so this is going to be the upside, but then when we open it, all the way, it's gonna come up and we need to cover the back. So, I think I wanna use something blue here, pull the blue back in. So I need a second to pick a pattern, be right back. Okay, I decided, um, I, I have we have a couple of different patterns, but I wasn't really liking the way anything else was coming together. So I'm thinking about repeating this pattern, which is also on the flip side. I have one other choice that I just spotted. And you can try it, but I'm not, so sure and it's this stripe oh no we can't use that because we can't have a stripe in a stripe so it's definitely going to be this um yeah so this is the right side it is i've already uh inked it what is this and we want it flush or just mounted perfectly on one side it's okay if it's not quite wide enough because that's the side that's going to get glued down hopefully that wrong bottle hopefully that makes sense So it's gonna get installed just like so. And I'm not going to mark it, I'm gonna eyeball it, we're gonna center it. And we're gonna come up three quarters of an inch on the glue. So, I'm gonna get that marked. Thank you. 
Let's double check that. Oh, I need to make sure it's going to close. Yeah. So it, this is the way it's going to close. So I just want to make sure it wasn't going to get hung up in the spine. It's not. We're good. And it looks like I can actually adjust this and move the glue up another eighth of an inch. So let's see. What is that? Seven eighths, basically. Not quite an inch. Okay, I'm going to turn it sideways. I just want it centered. Left, right. Actually, it's top to bottom, but when I turned it sideways, it was left to right. Okay, so there it is, completely open. I need to do some housekeeping. And um, this is what it's going to look like in its semi-closed state and its completely closed state. This is feeling a little bit tight, so I might have uh, checked on that one. It'll close, but it's a little bit tight. Before you glue down this panel, do that test and make sure this flap is going to close okay that's it i will have an insert um it will be in the cut list so you'll know what size to make it i'm not prepared to decorate it yet so i haven't trimmed it out so you'll see that in the walkthrough and the size of the um, insert will be in the cut list which is in the description so that's it for page seven